Hey y'all, it's Anne Marie. In this video, I'm going to tell you a little story that I hope doesn't get me in trouble on YouTube. I'm going to tell you the story of the one time I bought a fake bag on purpose. If that's of interest to you, stay tuned. Hey there, it's Anne Marie Bold Girl Travel, and on this channel, I talk about travel, style, fashion, not necessarily in that order. I believe that style is for everyone and it has no expiration date and that travel is the best self-care there is. So if that's of interest to you, please hit the like button, subscribe, comment, and share with a friend. Now let's get into today's topic. So you guys, today I'm going to talk about the one time I bought a fake bag on purpose. And I know this is a hot button topic. Um, not just on YouTube, but all over. There's lots and lots of stories about super fakes and the rise of the super fakes and fake bags and how wealthy women are buying fake bags. And I'm not offering opinion on any of that. All I'm going to do in this video is tell you about the time that I bought a fake bag. The one time I bought a fake bag on purpose. I'm going to show you the bag. I'm going to tell you how I ended up buying it. Um, and whether I would ever do it again right and 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 to you know not to keep you in suspense i would never do it again and in this video i'm going to also tell you why i would never buy a fake bag again but first if, if you've been following me for any amount of time you know i love handbags i love handbags i love shoes i love clothes i love all of it um i love glasses i have lots of glasses too um when i found out I, my vision was going to hell i started buying really cute frames so i like glasses as well but my first love has always been shoes. Um, and then handbags came later. But I have a great affection for handbags, especially high quality, I guess, luxury handbags. And I have a collection of them. Um, I used to have a bigger collection. I sold a lot of them when I moved abroad, but I kept my favorites. And I've added a couple to the collection. Um, every year I usually buy myself a new a bag for my birthday. Um, last year I probably bought more than I no normal. We're going back to normal this year. So I think I've bought um, two bags this year. And I don't think I'm going to buy one for my birthday after all this year. I might. It might change. But I feel like it can wait maybe for the holidays. I have my eye on a specific bag. And so if I get anything, it will be that one. And when I get it, I'll share what it is. Um, but when I was younger and I first started um, my bag collection... I got burned a couple of times buying handbags that I thought were genuine on eBay. And this was before eBay instituted their authentication process. But to this day, I won't buy a handbag on eBay. I got burnt twice. Um, and I also got burnt at a boutique in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. Um, there are lots of boutiques down there that um, sell um, designer things. And I got burnt at a boutique in Washington, D.C., and so as soon as I was able, I stopped buying um, handbags anywhere but directly from the seller. And that's pretty much still my MO. From time to time, I might buy a vintage, but for the most part, um, I buy my bags directly from the seller. And if I'm going to buy them secondhand, um, my first choice is Vestier Collection because I like their authentication process. But I do highly recommend that anytime you buy a secondhand bag that you get a third party authentication done on it as soon as possible. Um, because no matter what there are, every, every single one of these sellers um, have problems sometimes with authentication. As you know, the real real has a really bad reputation now for um, not having a good authentication process and for people um, buying fakes from them. They have been videos all over YouTube and social media and so on about that. I have actually sold genuine handbags to the real real. So I know at least some of their bags are real because I have sold them Vuitton. I've sold them um, Fendi, but I have not. I've only bought one bag from them and it was authenticated and it was real, which was a Vuitton backpack. But I, as a general matter, don't buy bags from them on a regular basis because they don't have a good reputation for doing thorough authentication. I instead would recommend that if you're going to buy secondhand that you check out Fashion File. I have bought a bag from Fashion File and it was authenticated. And it was great. I have since sold that bag, but it was a um, Gucci Boston, um, Boston bag, I believe is what it was called. But I've since sold that. And 
but I think Fashion File has a very good authentic authentication process and they have a good reputation. Um, Vestier Collection also has a very um, good authentication process, but I think no matter what, um, sometimes things get slipped through because these new wave of handbags are very, very good. They look very, very good, okay? Um, and so I'm gonna get to my experiences, why, how I ended up getting this bag and knowingly buying it. Um, but also a little bit about what I know about it. So the first time I saw a really good um, copy of a designer handbag was when I was in Bali. So when I went to Bali, I had my, and I had my Gucci, um, my red Gucci Soho, which I used to wear all the time because it was one of the first bags, genuine bags I ever bought, first designer bags I ever bought. Was it the first? No, my first designer bag that I ever, ever, ever bought was my Fendi, a Fendi bucket bag, which is now considered vintage. I actually saw um, it in a vintage store in Rome recently, and I and, and the same bag that I have. Um, and it's a beautiful bag and I love it and I will never sell it, I will always keep it because I was so happy to be able um, to buy it when I did and there's a whole story around me getting it that I won't get into right now. But um, I had my Gucci Soho, I'm in Bali, and I'm in the shopping district in Bali. And where was I in Bali? I was near, I was in the, in the, in the, in a tourist area. What is that big tourist area? Is it Nusa Dua that I was in? It might've been Nusa Dua near the beach. Um, but there's an avenue that's filled with like boutiques. And a lot of the boutiques are literally dedicated to selling fake bags. And I went into this boutique because you can go into markets and they all have fakes, but they look like fakes. But I went into this boutique and they had really great replicas, as some people like to call it replicas. It sounds better. I just say fake. They had some of the best replicas I've ever seen in my life. And I remember and I have my real, you know, genuine, authentic bag across my body. And I'm walking around the store and they had some of my bag in there. And I'm looking at my bag at one point and looking at the replica on the shelf and they were shelves filled with them, like on display, like, you know, and I have a cousin, a cousin and some a, a relatives. I won't say exactly who the relatives are, but I, I remember getting on um, FaceTime and FaceTiming them to show them the bags in the, in the store, because I was like, look at these, these look almost exactly like my bag, but there are little differences that when I put my bag up against the copy, that if you looked closely like around some of the stitching and things like that, that you could tell, but you had to really look closely. And so one of my relatives was like, can you get me one? So I negotiated back and forth with the guy in the store and I got her one. I remember him looking at my bag and telling me, you know, basically like, why are you buying another one? And I said, no, no, mine's is real. You know what I'm saying? But that was the first time I ever went in somewhere where I saw good like copies of um, and they had Gucci, they had Fendi, they had um, several different brands in the store. I don't remember where they had Vuitton in there, but they had Gucci, they had Fendi, they had um, a lot of like Bottega and stuff like that in there. So flash four, and this was many years ago, first time I went to Bali. Um, so this was probably like 2018, 2019 time. Then, um, I think it was 2018 or 2019, I went to Croatia and while in Croatia, I did a day trip. I was in Dubrovnik. I did a day trip to, uh, Montenegro. It's a beautiful, beautiful place, by the way. And when, and one of the stops, and I don't remember the name of the town, but in one of the stops, we did multiple like little stops along, um, along the coast in the country. There was a place filled with boutiques and stores. And there were several stores that also were just everything in there was, was fake, but really good ones. And they had Vuitton boots, they had bags, they had shoes, they had everything, sneakers, Gucci, everything, all fake. And I'd never seen like, like people have like whole boutiques full of fake stuff, but that was what it was. And so that was the second time I ever saw anything fake, but I never bought anything because I was just kind of like, I have the real thing, you know, what am I buying, buying? fake ones, especially Vuitton and stuff like that. I, I, even when they look good, I can always still subtly tell differences. And so I have never really wanted to buy anything fake. And also for me, 
one of the benefits of buying the real thing is that if I'd ever decide that I want to part ways with it, I don't always get exactly what I paid for it, but I know I'm going to get a, a decent return on most things. There's some brands that sell bet resell better than others, but I know I can sell, sell what I have and get a, uh, some money back for what I paid. And in some cases I've sold bags and gotten more than what I paid, depending on what the bag was. And those were primary Vuitton products that I sold where I got, um, more than what I paid because Vuitton went up on the price of some of the things that I was selling. And so by the time I sold it, um, I was able to get back more than my investment. That's happened once or twice, but most of the time I get a little bit less, um, except for Fendi. Fendi has horrible resale value. I don't recommend, I mean, honestly, if you buy Fendi, buy, buy secondhand, buy from fashion file or something, cause I don't think paying retail for Fendi is worth it. That's just my personal opinion. Love Fendi but would never like pay retail for Fendi bag ever again. Cause the return is just, they don't keep their value and neither does um, some other brands, but that's not what this video is about. So I won't get into that. But I generally, as a rule would not intentionally buy a fake. And like I said, I got burned um, on eBay a couple of times. I got sold, sold a fake Vuitton bag. I got sold a two fake Vuitton bags. And also the one that hurt my feelings the most was the Fendi um, that I bought in that boutique at, that turned out to be fake. It was a great, I mean, it was a top tier fake, right? Before they were using the word super fake, it was top tier. Um, but, cause I remember wearing in a Fendi store and they thought it was real. So it wasn't until I went to sell it and had it authenticated that it turned out that it wasn't real, right? Which really hurt my feelings. Cause that was probably um, the most that I had, I even paid more for that bag than I did for the Fendi I bought in Neiman Marcus, right? In the Fendi boutique in Neiman Marcus. So that hurt my feelings. Um, I've since given it away and it has a new home and the person who has it loves it and doesn't care that it's fake. Um, and it still looks fantastic. I mean, it was, it was a Fendi spy bag back when the Fendi spy bag was all the rage. It was a Fendi spy bag, but that really hurt my feelings. So I really was like, after that, I was like, whatever I'm buying is coming directly from the source. So pretty much every bag I have now, except for the one that I'm going to show to you and the one, the backpack that I got at the real, real, which is a vintage, which Vuitton doesn't make anymore that I've always wanted. Those are probably the only two bags that I have in my collection. That's not true. Those two are, are, are secondhand. One is fake and I knew it was fake when I bought it. That one secondhand and then two other bag, one other bag that I have that I also got um, secondhand because I could, it could not be found um, on the market anymore is my large um, Loewe puzzle, which I've already had authenticated and it is authentic. It's beautiful. I think I've done a video about it before um, and I'll be doing a um, video soon to share with you the bags that I've bought that um, I probably wouldn't buy again. Um, I think, I don't think I've done that video yet. I might do a video about that, but one of the bags that I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love is that Lueve. Um, it's a multicolored puzzle. It's gorgeous, but I think those are the bags that I have that I have not bought directly. Every other bag I have in my collection, um, and there, there are several of them are all authentic bags that came directly from the store. Uh, and I've been that way for several years now, for the most part, unless it's something vintage that can't be found in the store because they don't carry it anymore. If I want something, I'm going to go buy it directly from the store um, unless it can't be found because I just am super, and it's a pain to have to go through the auth second authentication, pay somebody else to authenticate your bag. So that's a whole other process. But I definitely think if you're going to buy secondhand that you should definitely do that. And if you're going to buy anything from the real real, for example, definitely do it because they have their multiple stories about them not buying, you know, they don't have a good authentication process. So a lot of fake things get through. So before you buy anything from their site, you should make sure that either, you know, who, who sold it to them. Like my stuff I know is real because I, I bought it directly from um, the store and, but some of the other things on the site from what I've heard, they, they have a lot of things that aren't real. So I wouldn't buy anything from them, but I'd have sold things to them. So, um, so let's get to the story of how I ended up buying this back. So as you know, or some of you may know last October, I went for the first time I went to Egypt and I did a whole live about the trip and, but I didn't tell this story. I did a whole live about the trip 
you can I'll link it to this video in the description if you want to watch it um but one of the things that happened when I was in um Egypt was I think it was we were in Aswan at this point and we were at this lovely hotel in Aswan one of the most beautiful hotels I've I've been inside of it was really pretty it was a move and pick hotel and and I also noticed this when I we went back I think we went we went back to Cairo um I know the same thing but in the moving pick there were a whole bunch of boutiques um, and I didn't really go inside of any of the boutiques initially when I got to the hotel. I went and got me a massage and I was chilling. But one of the ladies who was on the trip, she was very, very sweet, older lady. Um, and she was constantly admiring my style throughout the trip. And we chatted a lot. And we talked a little about my handbag um, uh, collection. And she was telling me about her daughter having, um, being a big fan of Chanel. And that she couldn't believe her daughter spent that kind of money on a handbag and so I think that's how it came up and then I was telling her you know I didn't blame her daughter depending on what kind of Chanel it was that she had and we talked and she was telling me her daughter had gifted her a bag it wasn't Chanel it was something else I think it was a Vuitton bag and she liked she liked Vuitton a lot so I feel like I was either in the lobby doing something or something but she came up to me and she said there's a boutique in here and they have Louis Vuitton bags they're not real, but they look really good. And she wanted my opinion on whether she should pay what the guy wanted her to pay for the bag. And she came to me with, for advice because I had helped her negotiate in the market um, the night before when this guy was trying to make her pay too much money for something that she wanted. And I intervened and I negotiated him down by half. So she came and she wanted to know my opinion. So she was like, it's in the boutique, you know, downstairs. And I was like, what boutique? And she was like, well, I'm going to go down there um, to talk to him again about the bag. Do you want to come with me? So I was like, sure. So I met her and we went, we were walking, you know, we walked to this boutique. We go inside, this young man is in there and the, the boutique is filled with bags. And, you know, they're all obviously to me fake. Um, but then she's talking to him about the bag. And he says, she, he says to her, hold on a minute. I'm going to go get the bag. And he goes into another room that's off the room that we're in. And he comes out with the bag and it's beautiful. It looked, it looked good. It looked good. And so, you know, he told her what he wanted her to pay. And I don't remember what it was, but it was somewhere between a hundred to 200 to $300 or something like that. And she was asking me what I thought. And I told her what I thought, but it was really good. It was a good fake. It, was, it looked good. And I know because I had the original of the bag. And so I'm looking at the bag and then he, but so he said, the good, our good ones are in this room. Would you like to see them? He says that to me. And I said, sure. No, why not? I went in there and this man had some really, he, it was super fake central. He had some really great looking replicas in there. Those things looked good. He had a Fendi, um, what do they call that Fendi bag? The new one, the Fendi with the big F on it. Um, I'm very bad about the names of bags unless I own them and I don't own that bag, but he had that Fendi clutch bag. That's been all the, that's all the rage. It's very popular. I'll put the name in the, um, on, on the, on the screen, but he had that bag and I looked at it. It looked really, really good, but I was like, I wouldn't carry it because it's small and it's a clutch and I don't really like bags that don't have, um, cross bodies, but it, it looked really good. And I was looking at it and then the bag that I ended up buying caught my eye. And it was the YSL I care bag. And I'm gonna put a picture of the original on the screen here. Now I first saw the originals bag when I went to Saks, which was right before this trip to Egypt. I went to Saks and I ordered the, um, YSL, uh, takeaway box bag. And I know I did a, a video where I showed you guys my YSL takeaway box bag. And I'll put a picture of what the takeaway box looks like in, um, right there on the screen. But I, when I went to see, the YSL takeaway box and I ordered my bag from Saks. And then right when I walked out of Saks, I realized that there was a YSL store right across from Saks. So I went over there and when I went over there, they actually had the bag because I went to YSL to get the takeaway box. It didn't have any in, or in stock, but they ordered it for me to have it delivered to me so that when I got back from Egypt, it would be where I needed to be so I could take it back home with me but they didn't have the actual bag in the store. So I went across to the YSL store just to take a last look at the bag 
and of and and confirmed how much I loved it, which I did, and I love that bag. Um, it's it's so interesting looking to me. But they they had everything in there. So um, this was the uh, YSL at Tyson's Corner, and if you are familiar with Tyson Corner, Virginia, there's a whole uh, shopping center dedicated to luxury items. There's Tyson's one and there's Tyson's two, and Tyson's two is the luxury arm of the shopping center, and they've got every store under the sun. Um, in there, they've got YSL, they've got Bottega, they've got um, Gucci, they've got um, Vuitton, they've got everybody. Everybody's stores in there, and then Saks is in there. And I'm not sure if there's a Neiman Marcus, but there's a Saks Fifth Avenue. So I went in there, and I was just looking around because I just wanted to take a look. So while I was in there, I looked at the eye care bag, and the eye care bag at the time was four thousand dollars, and since then they've upped the price again. And so since I had just ordered the takeaway box, there was nowhere I was going to go spend that kind of money. And, you know, I prefer to buy my bags overseas anyway because you say I save money on them. So I just kind of made a mental note of it was like, you know, if I see one while I'm overseas, then I'll take another look at it. But I looked at it. And the other thing I didn't like about it was how soft the leather was. The leather is super, super soft. It's lambskin. Um, but the thing about leather that soft is that it damages easily. And so I looked at it and I thought it's a really pretty bag, but I was worried about the quilting. Um, it's quilted lambskin, but it's, and it's a big bag. So that's what I liked about it. Super big, put a lot of stuff in there. So I, I was looking at it, also looked at this red caged bag that they had, but I just, it's metal. And I just didn't think it was practical for what it cost. And I knew I probably wouldn't use it very much. So because I ordered the takeaway box, I was like, that's good enough in terms of having a statement piece like an archive piece for my collection. I'm not going to buy the cage one as well. So I left the store and then I ended up in Egypt. But when he brought out the eye care bag, it looked so good. And I'm going to show you. So this is my, the eye care bag that I got in Egypt. My, the one fake that I, in my collection, this is what it looks like. It is, it is sol It is leather. It's quilted leather and it's real leather. It's not plastic. It's real leather. It feels really nice um, and it comes with everything the, the bag that I saw in the store comes with and it has the little purse and the chain and everything and you can take this off and so far the 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 metal has not tarnished at all on this that I've had and I've had it now for almost a year and the leather is very very nice so it's really nice and it's got all the embossing and all the everything that if you saw a real one. And the funny story is when I got back, it's beautiful. It's leather. It's lined. It's it's I have stuff in it right now. So you can't see it, but it's really nice and came with a dust bag. But it was it's beautiful. And the size, everything, it's huge. And I like it for running errands and travel. I've traveled with it a couple of times and it's great. And I have no complaints about it. The leather is beautiful. Um, the stitching is lovely. I can't complain about it. And when I saw it, I mean, when I saw it, when he showed it to me, I actually, when I saw it on the shelf and he took it down and showed it to me and he told me that they got, they ordered their high end replicas from a very particular source that, you know, the emphasis is on making it as high quality as possible and as close to um, the real thing as possible. And so I told him though, that I could see some differences and he kept insisting that I was like, no, there are slight differences, but I really liked the bag. And so I was like, you know what? I'll buy it. And I paid $400 for it. And, and I paid $400 for it because of the leather and the quality of the leather and the quality of the quilting. And so I thought it was a good price for what the quality of it was that if I was going into coach or somewhere like that, I was going to spend the same kind of money and you know, you don't get a lot of money back on a coach bag. So for me, that's what my comparison was. And YSL is probably is ranked above coach, but YSL doesn't have the same, you know, resale value as a Vuitton or Chanel or Hermes, the, those level bags. So, you know, he and I went back and forth and we bargained and I, I paid $400 for it and threw it, you know, threw it and get in the, my suitcase, brought it back. Now, Right after I got back from Egypt, I went to visit my friend who was not, he was ill and has since passed away, my best friend. And when I walked into her house and I have this bag on my shoulder and she's immediately like, what are you doing with my bag? 
And I was like, what are you talking about? And she was like, I have that same bag. I got it when I was in Paris last year. So I was like, let me see it. Cause I told her, this is not real. This is a fake. And she's like, you're lying. And I was like, no, it's not. It's not real. It's a fake. And she was touching it and everything. And she was like, oh my God, this is really, really nice. And I said, no, it's not fake. It's not real. I bought it. And I was telling her the story about how I bought it. And she was like, I said, let's go upstairs and compare the bags. So she pulled hers out, laid it on the bed. I pulled mine out, emptied everything out of it, laid it on the bed next to hers because hers was empty. And then I compared the two of them. And what I would say the primary differences in the bags were, was actually that I liked the, my leather better than hers because her leather was thinner when you felt thinner to me when I touched it. And it was softer though. That was the only thing. Her leather is softer and this leather is soft, but her leather was softer because it's lambskin. I don't, this is not lambskin. It's leather, but it's not lambskin and hers is lambskin. So hers was softer and actually it didn't look as black as this one does, right? She was actually saying she liked mine just as well as hers, but the shape, the size. And then one thing I thought was that the size of this one was slightly, it was just slightly because I literally laid my bag on top of hers to just check was slightly smaller than hers. The original was slightly bigger, probably about an inch, half an inch or so bigger when you laid them flat one on top of the other. And, and her leather was softer because hers is lambskin. Mine's is not. Um, and, but also hers bag also already had scratches and she said on it because it's lambskin, lambskin scratches very easily. So you have to really take care of it. Um, I have no scratches on my bag. And when I just got this, I wore it all the time. Cause I really liked it. I threw it around. I stuffed it under the seat in the plane. Cause I mean, it ain't real. So, you know, I'm not stressing. I stuffed it under the seat in the plane. No scratches, no scratches, no damage. I like it a lot. Um, and I do keep it in a dust bag when I'm not using it, but it is, you know, the leather isn't scratched up the way, um, lambskin will scratch. And that was the primary difference. The sizing of the person side was the same as hers. Um, the lining looked the same. The, 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 the embossing on the, the metal um, inside looks the same. The size of the YSL insignia on her bag and mine looked the same. But the, I thought her bag was just slightly bigger and the leather felt softer to me when you touch them both. Now, I enjoy this bag. I think it's, it's, it's fun. I like carrying it around. It holds a lot. So I like it for travel more so than everyday use. Um, I wish it had some type of organizer and I might get an organizer for it. If I use it more, I don't use it a whole lot. I've used it a lot when I just got it, but I haven't carried it, um, in a couple of months. And I think it's more of a fall bag than a summertime spring bag. So I'll probably use it more, um, in the fall, but I like it a lot. I always get compliments when I take and I take it out and I tell people, I'll tell people straight up it's fake. I don't, I don't care. I'm like, it's fake. I got it in Egypt. It looks good. Right. Um, but I wouldn't do it again. Um, I wouldn't buy it, buy a fake bag again. Why? Because whenever I get tired of this or I lose interest in it, which is kind of, you know, halfway there. Cause I really, like I said, I haven't touched it in months. I can't just sell it. I can't do anything with it. I mean, I can gift it and I probably would end up gifting it to somebody. Um, but I can't sell it because it's fake and I would never even try to sell it because it's fake. I would give it away, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't obviously wouldn't sell it because it's not real. And also the, you know, the more I understand about the fake bag market, um, the more I understand that it's not just that they're copying other people's intellectual property when they do this, but there's other, other, um, nefarious activities, uh, associated with the fake bag market. So that's another reason why I would never buy another one on purpose. Um, but because I was offered one again, when I was in Turkey, I was in a boutique and the guy was admiring, um, my Gucci bag that I had on across my body. And so he says to me, you know, we have a whole, you know, if you want to go downstairs, 
in my other boutique, we have a wonderful collection of, 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 of bags. And I told him, I don't buy fake bags. And that's what I told him. I said, this is real. I don't buy fake bags. So I said, unless you, they're real, I'm not even interested in seeing them. And that was the end of the conversation. And so I, um, would not intentionally ever buy a fake bag again, despite the fact that I really like this one. I love the quality of it. Um, I like how it's held up, um, so far in my travels and, and my use of it, but I wouldn't buy it again simply because, um, I just think it's better to buy the real thing. And that way you not only have something that's real and came directly from the manufacturer, even though we all know, you know, there's been a recent scandal around Dior where, um, Italian authorities went into a factory and find Dior and I think Giorgio Armani because they were violating um, workplace laws in um, Italy. And they indicated that they were paying the company that had was supplying the workers that was um, making the bags for Dior. They were paying them about $53 per bag. And these bags are selling for, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars So that's not even a double markup. That's like a quote, you know, I don't know what, what that 10 times, six to eight times, 10 times, 20 times markup of what they're paying per bag. And I'm not knocking anybody's hustle and anybody's right to make a profit, but that's really egregious. If you're paying $53 for a bag and you're charging people four and $5,000, that's just crazy. Um, and besides the fact that you're violating rights and people were not even getting breaks. They said people were sleeping at the factory in order to meet the demand and the schedules and the deadlines and so on. And that's what they actually got fined for. Not the pricing, the pricing is whatever the person sets is the price, but it was the workplace conditions and stuff like that that they got in trouble for. And I have no illusion that other luxury brands are guilty of doing the same exact thing. So they may have cited Dior and um, Armani may have gotten caught up in this, but I'm sure they're not the only ones. And so I think that it kind of made me think um, also about what kind of work conditions the people who make these fake bags are working under. Um, so that's another reason why I would not buy another one. Um, no matter how good it looks, I wouldn't, and I wouldn't put myself in a position to even see how good it looks. Um, but honestly, I would never went to that boutique if I hadn't gone down there with the lady to help her. And she did buy her Vuitton bag and was very happy about it. Um, but I would not, um, uh, ordinarily even go into those places. Um, the two other times that I went in there was kind of by, like I was going into the boutique because I thought it was just a regular store. And then when I got in there, I realized that it was a bag, a store dedicated to fake bags. Cause I mean, I go into boutiques all the time to sell bags because when I'm in Italy, I go into stores and I buy leather goods. I buy leather jackets, I buy wallets, bags, um, but they're not fakes. They're just really nicely made, you know, leather um, goods. One of my favorite av everyday bags are bags that I've bought in Italy. Um, I have a backpack, a multicolored backpack that I absolutely love that I got in Italy. So, and that's leather. So I always go into little stores when I see leather things in the window but in this particular, in those particular cases, I went into a store and then I realized when I got into the store and then I didn't buy anything. But this time when I just, when I saw that bag, it just looked so good. I just, this bag that I got, it just looked so good when I saw it. Um, but in, in the future, I won't even put myself in a position. And if I'm in a bag, I'm just not going to buy it. Like I told the guy, I don't want to see it. If it's not real, I don't want to see it. I'm not going to do it. But I do think that there should be no illusions about the reality that even if you're buying directly from um, some of these luxury brands, a lot of these luxury brands, um, first of all, a lot of the stuff isn't manufactured in Italy. They may um, put the materials together in Italy, but then they finish it in China. I don't know if people know that. A lot of the bags, that's how they, they're finished. And then they mark them made in Italy because they like put the materials together for it. But then the actual finishing of the bag is done in China. There are very few brands that actually make their bags completely in Italy. I know Hermes or in France, Hermes is one of the few that actually hand stitches their bags and a single person makes a bag and the bag is numbered and that's why their bags are so expensive. Um, and the quality is what it always has been, which can't be said about Chanel because I can honestly say 
I have a friend who had a Chanel bag and that was the first time I ever like saw and touched and held a Chanel bag. And I own two Chanel bags and I don't think the quality of the bags that I have are anywhere near as nice as the one she has. Um, and I paid more for the ones I have than what she paid for hers because she had hers for like 15 years or something. So the quality of some of these bags aren't even what they used to be and they're charging you gazillions of dollars for them. So that's another reason why I'm, I'm not going to say I'm not buying bags anymore because I love a beautiful bag, but I'm not going to be buying a lot of bags in the future unless I see something that really is absolutely beautiful. Like when I go to Italy, I often see you will buy something there and it's usually not a designer bag. They just have beautifully handmade, beautiful um, work. I mean, some of them just look like works of art, the jackets and the, the, the way that they cut the jackets and the way that they look like I have this green jacket. It fits so beautiful um, that I bought in Italy. So there's just their, their leather, the way that they make leather in, in Tuscany and in Florence, I think is just beautiful. And so I, you know, I have bags. I have a bag that I gave away before I moved that I wish I hadn't given away because it was so beautiful. And I think about it all the time, but I gave it to a friend, so it's okay but it was a red like a satchel bag that I bought when I was in Florence and I have an eye out to see if I can get another one um, if I see one that's, that's as nicely made as the one that I um, gave away. So I think that, you know, I'm never going to say I would never buy anything luxury because if I like something, I, I'm going to I'm going to get it if I can, but I'm not going to buy as many things as I did in the past because, you know, that story about the 50 something dollar bag is still very irritating to me. Because I did buy myself a saddlebag last year. I've always wanted one since I was in my 20s and I did buy it and I love it. But I thought to myself, well, I wonder how much the saddlebag costs. Now, I think the bags that they were talking about wasn't the saddlebag. I think it was the Lady Dior, but I'm not absolutely sure. And I don't particularly care for that bag. Um, but I still was like $53 versus $3,000, $4,000. I don't know how much a Lady Dior costs because I've never been interested in it. But I know it's up there in the $4,000 range, I think. I'll put, put the number on the screen. I'm going to look it up and see. But that's a lot. And so I started thinking, well, how, you know, what are the others doing? How much, how are they coming up with their pricing? And, you know, Vuitton, all of them have gone up. All of them have raised their prices. Um, some of them like crazy, like Chanel. And some of them just have gone up somewhat, like um, Vuitton. Like, for example, I bought myself a um, on-the-go, Louis Vuitton on-the-go bag, I bought it for some, myself uh, as a gift a couple years ago when, when I got a really big bonus for a job, something I did at work and they gave me a really big bonus and I took um, some of the money and I bought myself that bag because I had had my eye on it, I wanted it. So I, I gifted it to myself. And when I bought the bag, it was like, I want to say like $2,000 or $2,300. And now that bag is somewhere in the three, for high threes. I'll put it on the screen. I'll look it up and see what it costs now. So, and that's a bag I'm actually thinking of getting rid of because I think I may have taken that bag outside twice um, since I bought it. I like it and it's not a bag that I want to stuff under a seat. I'll stuff my never full under a seat in a minute, but that's not a bag that like folds. It's heavier and bigger and it's not a bag that I would want to stick under the seat on a plane. So I don't really travel with it that much. And it's not really a practical everyday bag either because to me it just draws too much attention. So it's really beautiful, but it draws a lot of attention. So I ended up not using it a lot, um, but I love it. Every time I take it out and think about selling it, I look at it and then I'm like, I'm not selling this bag. I, I just love it, but I'm still on the fence. Every year I, when I'm looking at what bag I should keep and what bag I shouldn't keep, it's always on the list, but then I end up um, holding on to it. But I also have the, the multi pochette, which I'm definitely selling this year, the multi um, accessoire. Um, and that's another bag that when I got it was definitely cheaper than what they're selling it for. But I don't feel like their price jumps has been as crazy as Chanel's price jumps. I can honestly say I don't plan to ever buy another Chanel. I have one. I, I have two. I love them. They're very pretty. Um, they're both structurally nice. And, and especially the one I bought myself for my birthday is really a collector and I will keep it. Um, but I will not get another one because I think their, their bags, the prices are just, and the prices have gone up since I bought the one that I bought. So, um, since I bought the one for my birthday, um, there, and mine's was one of those limited edition. They made one, they made the, the collection last year. Now this year they wouldn't be selling the same one. So it's a collector one and it's nice, but I would not, 
buy another one. I have the ones that the two that I own and I like them a lot and I plan to hold on to them. Um, but I don't plan to acquire any more of them unless I found a really nice vintage one. Like I saw some really nice vintage ones in a store in Rome, but I didn't buy it because they were in like, one of them was navy blue and the other one was gray. And if I were gonna buy one, it would have to be a black, a black one, um, because to me that's just more practical. And I also would, wouldn't mind getting a, a flap, the double flap bag, but not unless it's vintage with the, with the 24 karat gold hardware. Um, so that's the only way I would get another one. And it's like, if something fell into my lap while I was shopping in a vintage store in Europe somewhere, then maybe, but I'm not looking for anything. Like right now, I'm not looking for anything at all. I have a specific bag in mind that I would like. And if I'm able to acquire the one that I want for the price range that I want to pay for it, then I will get it. And it's an Hermes bag. And no, it is not a Birkin. And no, it is not a Kelly. I have no interest in those bags. It's something else. It's different. I don't have anything like it in my collection. I like it a lot. Um, but I recently have spotted a Loewe that looks very similar to the Hermes that I'm looking at. So now I'm weighing whether I'm going to get the Loewe version or whether I'm going to get the Hermes version. But I'm still leaning towards the Hermes. I might do a video about that if you guys are interested. The two bags that I'm, I'm looking at and the similarities and weighing one over the other maybe you guys can weigh in and tell me which one you would get with money not with the price not being the object just looking at two bags side by side but um that probably won't happen this year I really don't think I'm going to buy any handbag unless I find something really pretty and unusual while I'm in Florence this year but I'm not planning to buy a luxury handbag I think I'm good on those for this year um I got two that I really really like this year and I think those are enough and so I consider those my birthday and Christmas presents to myself. I got um, one in Turkey that I shared with you guys. And then I got another one in the Heathrow airport. Um, and that was the around me PM Vuitton bag. And I love that bag. I mean, that's to me is like a collector's item. I think it's really beautiful. It's, it elevates, you can dress it up, you can dress it down. I just love that bag. And I love my heart bag. I've wanted a heart shaped bag for a while. I had my eye on the Chanel. The price is ridiculous. Gucci had put one out. I love the bag. I'm glad I got it. It's in one of my favorite colors, red. I've been wearing the hell out of it. So I really like it. And I feel like I'm getting um, my investment back because I wear it all the time. Um, and it holds a lot of stuff. So it's good for traveling and so on. But I definitely don't plan to buy any more designer bags this year, 2024, unless something like a really great deal on the bag that I have my eye on drops into my um, lap and the bag I want, I've been looking at Vestier to see if I can find one there um, because trying to get a bag out of Hermes is like, it's like pulling teeth and I'm not playing games with those people. So it's like you go in the store, you ask if they have something and they don't have anything. How, how do you go in a store and no matter, every time I go into Hermes says they tell me they don't have no bags. And I'm like, how do you sell bags? You have any bags? None, right? And, and the bag that I want is not one of the most popular bags. It's just what I want. But they never have that either. Every time I go into one of their stores, they don't have any bags. They got belts. They got scarves. They got, you know, like shoes. They got jewelry. They ain't got no bags. So I'm just going to get it. If I'm getting it, it will come from the secondhand market. It will not come from the store because I'm not playing around with them like that. Um, but I definitely will not buy another fake bag because all things considered, I just don't think it's a good investment. Um, obviously, you know, if you really want something and you can't afford the real thing and you don't want to save up for it, let your conscience be your guide. Do what you want. I'm not judging anybody. People should do what they want. That's my personal thing when it comes to stuff like this. It's not like, you know, but for me personally, um, I will not do it again, but I'm not getting rid of this bag right now. I really like it and I'm going to continue to use it, especially for travel purposes and for, you know, fall, I'll probably wear it but not so much um, right now. But if I decide not to keep it, I'm just gonna probably just give it away. But I definitely like it a lot. It's The quality is top tier, but it still is a fake or replica. And even though I did buy it on purpose, I will never buy another fake bag. I have no intention, I hate saying never, but I have no intention of buying a fake bag on purpose again. Now, if somebody gets me on the low, that's a different story. 
but I don't plan to buy a fake bag on purpose again. So that ends the story of how I bought a fake bag on purpose and why I don't plan to do it again in the future. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. So drop your thoughts in the comments. Tell me what you think. Um, tell me what your opinion is. And that's that on this video. Thanks for watching. Take a moment before I sign off and just hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. And the algorithm will too. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.